Yo and hello everybody, Mike here, baseball collector. Happy Saturday morning to you. Hope you're doing well. And uh, I got my morning coffee here. So I'll be sipping on that occasionally as we go through this video. But this is going to be a little bit different video for me because I want to talk through kind of this internal battle that I've been having. Would love to solicit some re responses, maybe... Uh, get your opinion on this. So this is going to be a story time slash discussion, but the crux of it is, and what inspired it was this box right here. And I bought a 2020 tops heritage high number set base set 200 cards. Wow. Really Mike? Yes, I did. And so for those of you that don't know, I, I people think I'm this one dimensional guy or I only do this thing or whatever. I collect complete sets too. Like so many other collectors that are out there, I love complete sets. For some reason, I just love the completed set. I have every base top set since 1973. And since uh, about, I want to say 2008, 2009, I have been collecting the Topps Heritage set, the base set of Topps Heritage. And then I went back and kind of backfilled all the way back to 2001. And why is that significant? Because the Topps Heritage is 20 years old now. And what I love about Topps Heritage is it kind of combines both worlds for me. It's uh, you get modern players on vintage designs. And so it's like, oh my gosh, I get a little bit of vintage and I get you know, these modern great players and I can have cards of them and, you know, that's awesome. And then I have the flagship set. So I kind of have these two different versions of, of any of the modern players, which is kind of a, a, for me, that's what I need from, that's all I need for modern is that like, I don't need to be buying all. I mean, I do occasionally, it's not like I don't buy other modern stuff, but if, if I just had that, I'd be like, okay, at least I have that. And being the 20 year anniversary of heritage, I was thinking, God, I would really love to have those sets and binders. Look, when we were, or at least when I was a kid having binders with your cards in them and you could flip through and I used to sort them different ways in the binders and all of those things, it was fantastic. And then I see on YouTube, there's guys like Pepino man and G's Mikey, and they have these amazing, you know, sets in binders, these runs, and it looks so cool. And I mean, it's truly awesome. Having sets in binders is a great idea, but there's a but there. There's a caveat to that. And as I started doing it, so I said, okay, I'm going to start doing this. I'm going to put all of my heritage sets in binders and have them in binders. And I have done one. And I have stopped. And I'm going to explain why. And it's because it, it, it's not about the love of it, I guess. I, I started thinking about two things that made me pause and go, now, wait a second. Do you really want to go down this rabbit hole? Because I have been known in the past to go down rabbit holes and my OCD completionist nature will not let me stop. I have to finish. And so I I got started and I'm like, okay, <laughs> if you keep going, you have to finish. You know that you know yourself, you're gonna have to finish. Do you really wanna do this? And I, and I answered no to that, which is weird because hobby wise, I don't tell myself no very often. And let me tell you why again. So every set, and so here's the 08 set. I did the 08 set, which is kind of weird. Like, why would you kind of pick one in the middle? But, uh, you know, the 08 Topps Heritage set, which is based on 1959 Tops. You know, all the cards in here. Uh, it's, look at that. I mean, by the way, I'm missing some cards. So this is not a complete set. I probably have, of all 20 years of Heritage, I probably have 90 to 95% of the base cards. I'm doing the sets without the short prints because that's just stupid expensive. 
So I'm missing, I don't know, 50 or 60 08 Tops Heritage cards. So if you have any Tops Heritage cards from 08, like commons and stuff or whatever, you know, put a note, put a comment down below. I'd love to work out a deal with you, either trade or, or cash or whatever to, to kind of finish this set out, get you my list of what I need. But that's an aside. Sorry. So I did this set and I had an interesting time doing it. First of all, it took me almost two hours probably to put all the cards from, because I have them now in boxes. Like each set is in its own box. And I said, man, let's, let's do this. Let's see what this looks like. And again, multiply everything by 20, I guess 21, because 2021 heritage will come out soon. So multiply it by every year. <laughs> and this process has to happen that many times. Now, granted, it doesn't have to happen all at once. You can, I can spread that out and do it systematically and slowly. And I get that. But you, you got to think about the cost. If you don't go into anything without thinking about the cost, I think you're making a mistake. Go, okay. So I went online and you can buy great binders. Uh, if you buy them in bulk and I need 20 of them, I think it was about six bucks per binder. If you buy them individually, it's nine or ten dollars per binder. So let's say at the let's say let's split it and say seven dollars. Well, I need twenty of them. You know, let's let's call it twenty of them. I don't really need that many. I have some extras from days of collecting past, but I would need quite a few, fifteen at least. So that is you know three hundred. Uh, say what do we say? Seven dollars times. Let's say I need fifteen. There's $105 right there in the cost of just the binders. Then the pages come in. And we all know supplies have been in short supply, pun very intended. And so you got to get pages for all this stuff. And this 08 set is 720 cards. Now, granted, all of the heritage sets are not that big, but they're all six to 700 cards. So, you know, however many pages you need for that, I should probably do the math real quick. That's a good idea. Let's do that. I've got a calculator right here. Let's just say this set right here that I'm, let's just say there's 700 cards. And this is including the high series and stuff like that. So if you get nine cards, and I don't do front back. So I'm going to need 75 to 80 pages per set to do that. Well, a box of 100, I looked and they're 20 to 25 dollars with shipping to get the ultra pro you know the good nice pages and so there you go so you multiply that by 20 or 15. so now i'm from a hundred dollars let's see what 15 times 20 uh, it's 300 dollars. so now i'm four to five hundred dollars into making this happen which if it was only money I, it, it wouldn't be that big a deal. You could, you know, if you have a hobby budget, you just kind of spread that out and don't necessarily, again, need to do it all at once. You just, okay, I'll buy a few now and do a few later and all that kind of stuff. But it's more than that. It's more than just the cost. So again, that's a factor. The time is a factor. I mean, it, it was enjoyable to some degree of putting the cards in there and kind of reminiscing and looking at them. And like this set's great. It's got a Scherzer rookie, the 08 does the it has a, a Clayton Kershaw rookie Joey Votto so there's some cool cards in Hall of Famers and guys I look at and go yeah never gonna make it or never did make it you know all these guys that were hot rookies and you know one percent of them actually make it so that's not unenjoyable but it you know you're sitting down and your back starts hurting <laughs> you're putting cards into pages and you're trying to be careful not to mess them up and all these things. So it's, it's not without its, you know, issues. And so factoring in the time to do all of those sets is an issue. Again, not a deal breaker. None of these are deal breakers in and of themselves. It's when you look at it on cumulatively, how do you, how do I think about it? And again, this is a personal decision that I've made, not I don't want it to come across that having sets and binders is a bad thing. It's a fantastic thing. 
I put the, if you look at the title of this video, is it fantastic or foolish? And, and the answer is probably a little bit of both. <laughs> it's both fantastic and it's probably a little foolish because of the money you're spending and all that. I mean, you think four or $500, I could buy a really awesome card for that or cards or sets or all kinds of things. I could add so much more to my collection than just the supplies to store my collection, and display my collection. But I think a collection that isn't displayed and stored properly is not a complete collection. I mean, I'm a perfect example of overspending to store your collection. I mean, look right behind me. There's a beast that cost me twelve dollars to $1,500 to make just to hold my slabs. And I've got, uh, where is it? The Berg display case. I've got boxes and binder. I mean, I've spent so much to store my collection, so much to uh, display it properly, all of those things. So look, I'm not sitting here pot calling the kettle black. Guilty is charged. But at some point you got to go, okay, do I want to keep doing more, 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 more? So that's it. Money matters. Money matters. And then there's storage. There are guys I see that have wonderful card rooms and they you know, build shelves and all this stuff. And I have to look at my environment that I'm in and I'm in my card room here. And it's a, it's a, just a normal size bedroom that my wife let me convert into my card room. So I am in relatively limited space of which there is no extra <laughs> there. There's not like, you know, Oh, I got this awesome wall over here. I could put some bookshelves and put the binders up there. So space is an issue when you have to think about doing anything. And for me, it becomes, I don't have the space. Binders take up uh, this done properly and put up and whatever you're going to do with it is bigger than this. And so, or a long box, you know, 800 count box or whatever. So it's like, wait a second, I, if I'm going to trade out that space, I'm going to give up some amount of net space do I have it to give up? And the answer I came to was no, I really don't. And so you've got cost and space and time and all these things that factor into me going, you know, maybe someday that would be really awesome. Uh, but not now. And, uh, so I made the decision that for me, it might be a little bit foolish to go down that rabbit hole of, putting all these sets and binders and don't get me wrong. Again, I can't emphasize this enough. There is something incredibly special about opening a binder and going through a set. I mean, how cool is that? I mean, ideally someday, if I had unlimited space, unlimited funds, unlimited time to dedicate to the hobby, I would have every set in a binder. I have again, all these top sets, the hair, I have Ginter sets. I have, all these different sets, every one of them would be in a binder. If someone would just donate me about 300 binders, about 4,000 pages, etc., and come and do it for me, then yeah, I would be all in. And you could say, well, isn't that part of the joy of the hobby of doing that and going through that process? And yes, for sure it is. Uh, but each of us have to decide, again, we all only have limited hobby time. Do I want to spend my hobby time doing that? Or do I want to spend my hobby time watching my friends doing their YouTube videos, watching uh, or looking on eBay for other cards that I want to add to my collection, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We all have these different activities within our hobby life that we can do. Uh, we, we have to split those just however we feel like. So again, that is just what I wanted to talk through and kind of explain my thought process and where I went from, from enthusiastic and excited to, wow, maybe this isn't what I want to do as cool as it would be. And so that's where I landed. So again, a, a glimpse into the mind of Mike, which don't get in there, you'll get lost. Uh, but let me know what you think down below. I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on this. You know, I'm not, saying I'm right. And that this is, you know, the end all be all about this idea. I just, this is just where I came to with it and my conclusion. So thanks everybody so much for watching. If you stayed with it this long, 
You're a trooper. Appreciate you. Have a good day. Have a great weekend and keep collecting.